This is the cheapest five kilowatt hour wall mounted battery your money can buy, or at least the cheapest one that I can find on Amazon or any other website here in the US. This is the Humsync 48 volt, 100 amp hour wall mounted battery. Right now, you can pick this battery up for $599.99, which breaks down to 11.7 cents per watt hour or $117 per kilowatt hour. And if any time you find that this battery might be the right choice for you throughout this video, be sure to check out the links in the description below because I have the best possible deals down there. Currently right now, I have a 5% off coupon for this that could put this battery at $570. That is insanely cheap for a five kilowatt hour wall mounted battery. Here are some basic specifications you might be interested in. The overall size of this is 20 and a half by five and a half by 18 and a half and weighs in at around 104 pounds. It does have a 100 amp BMS and it is equipped with LFP cells that are rated for a life cycle up to 6,000 cycles to 80%. Bluetooth monitoring is available through the Humsync app. This is not Wi-Fi capable though. Although if Bluetooth is not your thing and you don't like that, you do not have to connect this battery to that if you don't want to. So you could check the state of charge, the voltage, the current, the power, the temperature in real time with the Humsync app, if that's your thing. So I wanna take a moment and point out the touchscreen on these batteries. This is some of the best information or a touchscreen that I have tested from any manufacturer on a battery like this. So hats off to Humsync for making them so user-friendly and displaying so much information on the screen without having to have an app because we could check everything from chart data to uh, the cells. We can look at you know the, the voltage in those cells. We can see the temperature of each cell. So we can see a lot of different things here. Uh, this is very intuitive and easy to operate. This is something that a lot of batteries fail to do because either they're now removing these uh, touch screens or taking them completely out of batteries or making you connect to an app. So again, I do appreciate having all that information right here on the front of the battery. And when we connect the batteries together, we can control all the batteries from one screen as well and see all the information that we need to see. So we'll get a little bit into that uh, later in the video, but good job to Humsync for making such an intuitive touchscreen on these batteries. Each one of these batteries are equipped with a RS-485 CAN port and an RS-232 port and a link in and link out port. So it can communicate with smart inverters, MPPTs, generators, and more. It also has a dedicated 125 amp breaker with an on and off button. The touchscreen and you can connect 15 of these batteries in parallel for a maximum of 76.8 kilowatt hours of storage. One quick note, this battery does not have a self-heating option. It's best suited for indoors in a controlled environment that doesn't get well below freezing. Although it is uh, rated for outdoors, if you have the right uh, environment, you can do that. But I would recommend putting this maybe in a garage or an area where it's more controlled. These batteries do have a five-year warranty with a 10-year after-sale service. However, I have never heard of Humsync. This is the first time that I have uh, had the opportunity to test any of those batteries out or anything of that sort. So I do not know if they're gonna be around in five years or if they're gonna be a lifelong company, someone's gonna buy them out. I don't understand that. All I can say is that they are offering a five-year warranty. I question any warranty from any brand, especially if I haven't had a warranty claim through them. So they can claim that they have a warranty, but do they actually honor that? So that's just something that comes with time and a proven track record for a company that services the claims that come in from their warranty. I'm not saying the Humsink won't, I'm not saying that they will. I'm just saying that they do offer a five-year warranty and you gotta take that for what it's worth. What you get in the box is one wall-mounted 5,120 watt-hour LFP battery, the positive and negative battery cables, a communication cable, a user manual, and the mounting brackets with all the hardware and anchors. The first thing that I wanna do is open this up and take a quick look inside. But I also wanna be clear that this is not a full teardown video, it's just a sneak peek so we can check out the overall build quality at this price point. 
Later on, I'm gonna hook it up to the EG4, and I'm gonna show you how to do that so we get to this point right here and test it out and see if it actually has the proper protection set in place for the BMS. And I'm gonna sprinkle in some helpful tips along the way. If you're planning on buying this model, that might make your life a little easier. And it does appear that each one of these connections have a silicone or a glue base of some sort at the connection. All I'm doing is I'm not putting any pressure on this. I'm just trying to separate that material so I can get this off without any damage. So, and I think it's coming off of there now. There we go. So it's definitely like a silicone. Let's see if I can pull that up. This is on every connection that I can see from the top of this, which is pretty nice that it has that so it doesn't come off. And from first impression, this does look like a pretty quality setup for such a budget battery. We have the positive terminals facing away from the negative terminals. We have glue on each one of the connection points there so they don't uh, back out and cause a problem. I can't really see much right here. So let's get this plate cover off and take a look at the battery. Now, one thing that I want to note is that this plate was a little crooked. So let's see if we can get that place back down in there, down on this back side. No big deal, but I would like to see all of these plates perfectly placed in these batteries. Now that could get knocked loose in shipping, but I think once you get them down in there right, and I think it's about to go, let me see if I can get this. I think if you pull these up at the same time and you go down in there at the same time, you get it straight. Now that's nice. No big deal. All the plates that I could see, like on that side back there, this one here and this one here and this one over here are now aligned perfectly. Let's look at the actual laser welds. So we have cramp reliefs here and each one of these are laser welded and then marked. And typically you see these marks, this is just for check for quality control. But if you see this on a boat, what's that for is if that boat starts to turn, then it would show that something was loosening up. But on this, that's laser welds, you don't have to worry about. This is just a quality check that each one of those welds are as they're supposed to be. And we have each one of these got crimps. So every one of the batteries, and we have a total of, I think, 16 total cells. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 16. So 16 total cells. And there's the BMS model number. It's BMS 16S100A. That is an LFP that stands for 16 in series at a 100 amps of output. So we can see the model number. And here's some other information if you can see that down there. But I do believe that the BMS is made by Humsync and not by a third party. I'm trying to give you all the information that I can find that I can get on camera for you. I definitely want to get this thing hooked up and see how it performs. Can we run it at 100 amps? Look there. I'm going to see if I can get a scan off of that and find out who the cells are actually manufactured by. So we got a couple that I might be able to get scanned. Maybe even this one up here. Uh, that one looks like maybe even a better choice right there. And to be honest with you, this is not a bad looking system whatsoever. This battery looks to be of <laughs> pretty good quality, especially at the price point this thing's coming in at. This is the cheapest wall mounted battery that I can find. And each one of these connections that you see on these batteries, this is how we're able to see what the cells are in balance or coming out of balance if we have a problem with the cell or not. So each one of those 
connections come down to the BMS and connects to the screen. So you can see if we're having any problems with any of these cells. There are also several temperature sensors that protect the battery from over temperature and from low temperature. So we'll see that we have one connection there. Over here, you see all of the communication ports that then connect into the board. So they have the same type of connections on this side that you would plug into these over here. So you just take one of those off. So you plug in this. So basically that is just an adapter that takes it from the inside to the outside for each one of those. I mean, overall, I'm pretty impressed with the battery without having to tear it down and destroy anything on this. I'm not going to go any further than this. This is not a teardown video. I just want to kind of show you guys inside of this battery and see whether you think it is worth the price that you pay for it. Uh, sometimes you get these cheap batteries, especially these wall mount batteries. I've never seen one at this price point. Uh, and the quality looks just as good as anything that I've seen from some of the major brands. I've got that side on. <laughs> so this shouldn't be too bad now. Boom. Now connecting the batteries to the Flexboss 21, this is what I did. Connected the primary battery to the slave battery was... This is our inverter communication cable that goes over to the inverter. This come with the inverter. They did have one that come with the battery, but it wasn't long enough. So I'll just use this one. So you can use the one that come with the inverter if it's a short enough run that you can use that. But to connect the batteries together, they provided this cable, which goes to the link out up to the link in on the second battery. So this is the slave battery, and this is our primary battery. And just to verify what settings I have on this, I'm gonna to go to settings. We have the can set, set to PY, MEG, DEY. And then if we go to the 48 or PY, GOSPOW, and that's on both batteries. So I can set both of this to either one of these but they say just click that and that's what I did. There's no option for Lux Power, which I think Humsync will be adding in the future because I've already reached out to them about that. However, the battery did communicate with the inverter using that setting. I did run into a little bit of a hurdle when trying to connect two of these batteries to the Flex Boss, but eventually I got it synced up and communicating properly. This is what happened. When I hooked up one of these, it was communicating great. But when I connected both of these, we were having a problem with communication showing two batteries in parallel from the inverter saying that we had two batteries. But what I wasn't doing is I did not have the CT uh, monitors installed. And as soon as I installed those, it started communicating properly with the batteries. Now, one issue that I'm having is that it's showing that the batteries have 20,048 amp hours of capacity. You'll be able to see on here that the battery capacity is showing 20,048 amp hours. This does not affect the state of charge or anything of that sort. For some reason, there's just a glitch that shows that the battery is 20,048 watt hours. However, over here, we have 200 amp hours, which is correct, but that does not affect the way that the inverter is handling this or the state of charge or anything of that sort. There's just a glitch in that number. That's the only thing that I can find uh, that is not recording correctly. And once I got everything hooked up, I ran a capacity test on one battery because we know that it should have 100 amp hours of capacity on this wall mounted battery. So I ran a discharge of around 0.2 C rate and did that for a couple of hours to make sure that we put it in a fair ball game of what it could output. And I come up with 101.75 amp hours 
out of the battery, which it passed the capacity test. Then you guys know I love testing out limitations of batteries and I wanna see if their fail safes that they claim would protect the battery actually do work. And the way I did this one is I did a uh, output of over 100 amps to make sure that the BMS would kick the battery off and protect the cells. Let's see what happened. I've disconnected the top battery. Now we've only got, let's go back here, hit pack. You'll see that the system is gone. And if I, I'm sorry, if I click pack and I try to change the battery pack, I can't because we're limited to this one battery. Now I want to test the discharge of this to make sure that this battery will shut off over 100 amps. So that's going to be a little bit uh, over 5,000 watts. We can easily reach that. We're currently using 4,800 watts, but we're using some grid to back that up. Well, it just now kicked off, but I'm going to go over to the grid, which is this 50 amp breaker. That's how I'm testing it. I turn that off. You may have seen a flicker in the lights when I did that, but we're using 4.6 kilowatt right now. I'm going to push that a little bit over 5,000 and see what happens. And you can see over here, we are discharging around 90 amps of output. So we're pushing this battery basically close to its limits right now. We've got 10 more amps that we can get out of it before the BMS should shut this battery off if we run it for too long. And I'm gonna to try to get a camera on this so we can see how much we actually pull. And then we'll take an inrush current at maximum to see if we get how far over 100 amps that we get. And I'm gonna to try to watch this just by my eyes to see if everything kind of matches up. All right, we did see a total inrush of 127.7 amps. So we've got our battery on up here. I did see this get close to 128 as well. And then I had a camera on this and we'll verify what that was. And that did reach up to 5.9 kilowatts of output. All right, so there we go. We just had to turn the battery on and back off if we overloaded the battery on the EG4 Flex Boss. All in all, the Humsink 48 volt 100 amp hour wall mounted battery is an insane value at this price. It has a solid build, intuitive touchscreen with a lot of information that you can control the battery with. It is compatible with smart inverters and it's robust protections that we tested to make sure that the BMS does protect the cells. This is one you might want to consider if you're looking for an affordable backup solution for your solar system or for your house. Now, I do want to point out, this is not UL listed. So if you're trying to connect this to the grid, you're going to fail your inspection. This is not the right battery for you. This is going to be for off-grid applications only. And if you have to have a UL listed battery, this is not the right one for you. I can almost guarantee you that if this was UL listed, there is no way they're going to come in at the price point that they're coming in at. So I do want to make sure to point that out because it's important for a lot of people. Some people don't understand that you must have a UL listed battery if you're going to connect this to the grid. So if you're running off grid, that's your uh, decision whether you want to do that or not. It's always recommended to have a UL listed battery regardless because it goes through third party testing. But a lot of people say that that is not as important as it once was before. That is not my judgment. I am not trying to say that. All I'm saying is that this is not a UL listed battery. However, at $599.99 on the cost, this is an insane value. And if you use that a link that I have in the description below at $570, you're not going to find that price anywhere. So be sure to check that out if you're looking for an affordable solution to back up your house or your cabin or even your RV, this could be a solution for you. So if you found anything in this uh, video helpful, be sure to smash the thumbs up button because it really does help me out. And I appreciate you guys hanging out with me in any of my videos. And thanks for hanging out with me to the end of this video. Hope to catch you in my next one.